Good morning to everyone. Once again at the midweek teach, we give the glory to Jesus again today for another day. We're presently doing a series on God is always correct. God is always correct. This is a great confidence for the uh, disciple of Jesus. And uh, if he's always free from error. The Word of God is free from error. Perfectly accurate. And... Uh, If we coordinate and are in harmony with collaborating with God, everything's going to be sweet. It's just going to be a, a great life, not saying that we don't have issues along the way. There will be hurdles. There will be obstacles and tests. So, um, but still, everything will be right. And it can't be any right up when we're walking with uh, the Lord Jesus in paths of righteousness. So, we looked at the sea last week. Uh, we said that was the sea incorrect as we deconstruct the word correct God is always correct we said that was for coordinating or coordinated with God and um, fitting in with him not him fitting in with us we see what he wants and then we fit in with him We arrange things for him. And this week we're doing the O. Um, and we're going to read out of Hebrews chapter 4. The O is for uh, Omni. He's omni, he's, he's all. He and his doctrine. He is all. That's why he's almighty. He's all knowing. Omni, all powerful, all present. So let's start reading in Hebrews 4, verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the Word of God is living, powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. And everyone will give account to the Lord. This life is not forever. We grow older by the day and each day 
a day nearer to our judgment. So, uh, let's fear the Lord. Let's, let's respect the Lord. And love the Lord. That we be counted worthy when he comes. And knowing that he is omni and he is all knowing we can trust in, in, in him there's no one in the world that is all or omni there's no one there's no religion man, woman, government tradition, culture that is all knowing actually traditions and cultures of men and the extent of the knowledge of humanity barely exist in comparison to the Lord Jesus and as we follow to the Omni God we're uh, we're in good hands When we look at, uh, and when we consider that he's all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-present, I mean, that just, uh, that's empowering in, in such a um, flaky world. That doesn't even know what's going on half the time. The government don't know what's going on half the time. There's all this infighting. Sometimes they break out into punch for punch, brawls in, in the house. with the opposition leaders. You see that in Japan. Is it Japan or...? One of those uh, countries they were punching on. Might have been China, I don't know. Go and punch for punch. It's disgraceful. But... Uh, most certainly not all powerful. No self control even. But God is always correct, isn't he? And why wouldn't he be being omni? <laughs> being omni uh, omniscient. We can go to him. We can trust in him. We can put our, our trust and our faith in him and when we do what he says we enter this rest um, it's a heavenly rest I would call it a foretaste of glory divine when we trust him, that he's all knowing, he's all powerful and all present. The world would and do relate to Superman or Spider Man or someone, 
they think that he's powerful or they're powerful and they're great, they're superheroes. But there's none, is there, to compare with the Omni, God. Hey? The Lord Jesus. Hebrews 3, verse 16 says, For who, having heard, rebelled? Who, for who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses, now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter that, his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Now we really need to believe he is omnium. Can he really be anything else as God? a lot of other gods out there. But there's not one. Not one. There's not one. That's Omni. There's only... Yahweh, he's Omni. There's only the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. who are omni, all-powerful. All-knowing, all-present. And I don't know of anyone else that can be present all the time with everyone. <laughs> Absolutely mind blowing, which is quite quite contra contrary to what people think of Jesus in the world. I think he's some idiot with a beard, some do gooder with a beard. that was hanging around Woodstock or something. <laughs> Quite the contrary. He's omni. Almighty. Hey? As we read in the book of Revelation, Revelation 1, 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty, the Almighty, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they would argue the point, they do not believe them. So how can they have rest? How can they be settled and established? It's definitely not wise, is it? Eh? They could not enter. We see that they could not enter because of unbelief into this heavenly rest and contentment. 
Godliness with contentment is great gain. To be content with God, that he is who he says he is. The seven day Adventists aren't much better, are they? Keeping their Sabbath, their Saturday, their day of rest. Hey? They still haven't taken Jesus as their rest. Rest. Sabbath means rest. Right? We know that God rested on the seventh day from his works. But if we obey the Lord, then we will obey the Lord. If we have faith, if we trust him, we will obey the Lord. We will do what he says. And we'll enter that rest every day. Hey? So, Hebrews 4.11 let us therefore be diligent to enter the rest. Be diligent to enter the rest. We don't want to drag our feet in any way, in, in any way with the Lord. We don't want to be unbelieving unless we all we we fall according to the the same example of disobedience. That wouldn't be good for us, would it? So, believing in and obeying this word, the doctrine of the Lord, living and powerful, right? living and powerful. This word uh, brings life and power into our lives through faith, obedience. We have no power or life I'm talking abundant life. We have no power or life without the word of the Lord operating in our lives unless we allow the Lord to have his way in our life every day. There's no peace and there's no rest until he has his way. I have come across a lot of people in the last 36 years, religious people, traditional people, cultural people, pagan people, atheist people, And uh, but not too many were possessors of abundant life or power. A bubbling, zesty life as they say in this country, full of beans. Excited and diligent.
and willing for the Lord. I haven't come across too many. Um, but I've come across a lot of religious, cultural people, traditional people, uh, people that don't have a God that is omni, that is all powerful, all knowing, and all present. <coughs> Excuse me. It wouldn't be a a midway teach if I didn't sneeze. Would it? <coughs> <laughs> at this hour of the morning. Now, yes, the doctrine that we have. God is always correct. He puts his word above his name. The word of God is living and powerful. Living and powerful. Abundant life. Rivers of living water is the word. It's able, capable, washing us clean. On faith obedience. Hey. It's a cleansing word. Jesus once said to his disciples, You're already clean because uh, you've been washed with the word. Wonderful. So, I know as I look back on, on my old life without Jesus, it was, it was dead. It, it wasn't abundant, overflowing, bubbling life. It was just dead and dry and dreary unless I had some booze unless the booze was running on tap <laughs> so the doctrine of Jesus uh, is sweet to the soul health to the bones. It, it's actually in the spiritual nutrition. In the natural too. The word of the Lord. Sweet to the soul. Sweet to the soul. Health to the bones. It's all these things, it's omni. Health to the bones. Hey. The being. Sweet to the soul, the mind, the will and the emotions. When you talk with people who walk close to the Lord, There's a sweetness about them, even a childlikeness, because they've obeyed through faith and obedience. They've done what the Lord said. They've, they've been converted. Unless you've been converted and become as a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom unless you humble yourself. Be converted, become as a little child. So 
something the proud cannot do. But the power is there. When we humble ourselves, he gives us power, doesn't he? To be converted. Gives grace, power to the humble. That he abases the proud. God is always correct. You can be assured of that. If he said his word is living, it's not some dead letter. Not some dead religious letter. The word is living. His doctrine and his way and he is living. He rose from the dead. He rose again. The lamb, he was slain, but he rose again. The people, they all cried to see my Christ crucified. But he rose, he rose, he rose again. The lamb, he was slain for us. Lamb slain, lamb buried, lamb risen, lamb alive. Lamb inside, lamb coming, eh? coming upon the clouds with a shout, the voice of an archangel, the trumpet of God will sound and the dead in the Christ will rise first and those who remain shall be caught up to the cloud to be with the Lord forever encourage one another with these things as the day draws near hey? who wouldn't want to be part with that hey? come on God is always correct He's free from error, perfect, perfectly accurate. We can put our trust in what he says, harmonise with God, think about it. You, you get in, in step with God. God Almighty, the Omni, Omni present. Omnipotent, omnipotent, and omniscient. We get in step with him. Ha ha ha. Left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. You're in the army now. The army of the Lord. Well, the army of the Lord. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget we're in the army of the Lord. Because if we do, we're going to start whinging, aren't we? Hey? Yeah. So we we'll go over to Timothy, eh? Have a look there in 2 Timothy 2 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Okay. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. 
you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare and tangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. See? We must compete according to the rules, according to the doctrine of the Omni One, the All-Present. The all powerful and the all knowing. Remember that we are soldiers of the Christ, soldiers and servants, em ambassadors and chains. As we ponder on the calling that's placed before our name, the road ahead looks hopeless full of death and defeat. But I know with the Master, I've got the victory. Servants and soldiers, ambassadors and chains. Hey? Looks like another Jibu placed before my feet. Another Jibu mountain. Another job to accomplish. Hey? King David was looking for a champion to take the stronghold, Jibu Mountain. Hey? Go up by the water well, the omniscient one gave the advice. You can take that mountain if you go through the water well. Because there was only one way up the mountain. And if anyone tried to go up the, the strong, to the stronghold, the Jebusites had the... No one ever could. They just pick them off on the way up. But the omniscient one made it clear. You can take that mountain if you go through the the well. That's why when I write that little song, looks looks like another jibu put before my feet. Looks like another another challenge. But God will bring you through that challenge. God will take you over that hurdle. God will bring you. Uh, through the, the the heartache and the pain, he knows how to. He's omniscient. Hey, God, any rivers you think are uncrossable, have you got? Any mountains you can't tunnel through. Did you know, my God, he specializes in things thought impossible. He'll do for you what no other no other powers can do. Hey? Because he's omniscient. He, 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 he's omnipresent and he's omnipotent, all-powerful, all-present. 
and I, I never present the help in the time of trouble. He's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. When the mud hits the fan, he was there before the first speck of mud hit the fan. He was already there. Okay? So, as we consider that we are to uh, suffer hardship and as good soldiers of the Christ press forward that things get hard we know he's there we're on the winning, winner's side hey? we're with the victor I know with the master I have the victory. Servants and soldiers, ambassadors and chants. As I ponder on the calling that's placed before my day. Hey? I like what Paul says to Timothy here in verse 7. Consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> after what he just said in uh, 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 7, and then in verse 7, he said, May the Lord give you understanding. And there's so many don't understand. This is not some frilly dress, fairy, uh, you know, uh, Desmond Tutu. A party with everyone wearing pink tutus. <laughs> this is war. We're talking war. People don't understand that in churches. They think it's a lovely little, you know, fairy tale. Happy slappy time. Huh? No, no, no. When God gives us understanding, we see we're in a war zone, 25 8. Whether we like to accept that or see it, that's the reality. We must endure. As good soldiers, we must compete according to the rules. Hey? And it took a hard working farmer, must be first to partake of the crop. Hey? There's rewards, but it's hard work, <laughs> it's no breeze. You know, it, it, it's no walk in the park to walk with the Lord Jesus. Real men walk with Jesus. He said down, it says down further in, in 2 Timothy 2.11, this is a faithful saying, if you died with him, you shall live with him. If we endure... Then we shall reign with him. If we deny him, he's going to deny us. We say no to him, he says no to us. Eh? Then, if we are faithless, he, he remains faithful. He can't deny himself. Obviously, talking about denying his word. He's not going to deny his word and what he has said for anyone. No matter how precious we think we are. <laughs> yeah, he will not deny himself for any sinner. So, in 
in the midst of this war, we have an Omni One. And lots of uh, soldiers would say, who, who've been on the front line, and I haven't, who've been at war, uh, many would say, I had a really top bloke next to me in the trenches, a really good bloke, and we're still friends today. Well, we got a greater one in the trenches with us. We got Jesus. <laughs> There's no soldier that ever wore a, a, a slouch hat, ever, in this country, that was omni. Right? We just don't have a soldier with us. We have the general. <laughs> we have the general with us. Each and every one of us. That will walk with him in, in faint obedience. We have the general parked, so to speak, parked beside us in the trenches. And he knows what's coming. He, he knows all things. He, he's all powerful and all present in the midst of this war. And we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting against principalities and powers of darkness in high places. Not low places, high places. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Eh? That's for sure. Spiritual, bringing down of strongholds in the spiritual realm. You're going to stop the powers of darkness in their place, stop them right where they are, where we live in it, according to the rules, of where we live. Uh, you know, faith obedience to the Lord. They won't be able to do a thing. Two Timothy two nineteen. Nevertheless the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from sin, from iniquity. And I've said many times, I've always believed, unless someone else can help me out with something better, I've always believed that iniquity was the sin of the forefathers. Because you know, it talks about iniquity, then it talks about sin. You know? Like sin was the immediate uh, wrong and evil that you might be doing. But iniquity was uh, the sin of the forefathers. So if we read this here, everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Depart from the sin of the forefathers or cease it from the traditions of men and the cultures of men and, and the worshipping of other gods that they did, the forefathers did. And the same era they were in, cease from that. Depart from it. I mean, it, this... Wording is coming from uh, Paul the Apostle to Timothy, but it's certainly coming from the Omni. You might be like these religious people that say, oh no, that wasn't written, that's not applicable to us, 
that I it was written to Timothy. <laughs> you get you see the stuff that Paul. You're taking the word literally again. Oh God, I don't know any other way to take it myself. Unless you want to go to a Bible college and some theological college where they're going to twist everything around and just smudge it all, smudge it and fudge it for their own gain. Eh? And you'll be a right reverend, left reverend. Before you know it, be left cross, right cross, here comes the red cross. Hey, eh? <laughs> no, I'll just take it as it is. Eh? Just take it as it is. Because if, if, if the word was only written to this people and to that people, there's nothing there for me. He, he never even gave me a thought. God, not interested in helping me, because I don't know what to do in the word of God. It's not applicable to me. As these clowns try to say, that's just letting people off the hook and, and saying, yeah, it's okay, you know, you don't have to worry about that because uh, you can go on in your sin. God, God is love and he, he, you know, he's all, uh, he's going to forgive you all. Even though you don't repent and depart from your sin, he's going to forgive you. Now that's just fairyland. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. That's not from the Omni. The Word of God is living. If you're reading the Word of God, or you're reading the Bible, and you're not bubbling, like the rubber bubble bubble bubble. You've got to be bubbling, right? <laughs> you have to be bubbling when you're reading the Word because it's living. It's abundant life. I'm diving into the, the hot springs of the living Word. It's bubbling. Bubbling. <laughs> Right? And it's making me so healthy. You know, some people travel the world to go to some miracle springs. You don't have to travel the world to go to the miracle springs. Keep your money in your pocket. Just get into the Bible. Get into the Word. Some are afraid of it. Some, are, some say it's full of hate. Some say it's full of confusion. Some say it uh, can't be understood by humans. Some say you have to be a Roman Catholic pedophile priest to understand it. Some say not even uh, not even the old uh, tongue kiss and Dalai Lama can understand it. And he he's the the wisest man in the world or something, isn't he? Always laughing. He's so happy. He's so happy. Always laughing. <laughs> He's laughing all the time. Uh, Delhi. Delhi Lama Dunkis. <laughs> Dunkis boy. Always happy. <laughs> He's supposed to know everything, isn't he? <laughs> he doesn't know Jack. He wouldn't know the time of day, that bloke. I tell you now. And they're following by the millions. They just follow on like sheep to the slaughter. There's no life there. I can tell you now. It's just all this one deceptive smile. That's all you get. And you can't make any sense. The only thing that he says is love and peace. And of course, he's added one to the repertoire. Added another one, Dunkis. Lampit and Dunkis. Hey? 
That's his doctrine. Peace, 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 love, love, peace, and tankers. <laughs> oh, I'm Dalai Lama. Where the God is living. Sweet of the soul, health of the bones, the mind, the will, and the emotion. Eh? It was sweeten you up. The Lord knows. We we all have a a, a bitter bitter amp fuse. <laughs> Every one of us. We all blow our bitter amp fuse. We all go down to the the protest, don't we? Give our share of abuse. Otherwise, we'll blow a bit of amp fuse. As old Mick Jagger says. He knows it's all been bitter. Being born of a woman. Born bitter. Born bad to the bone. George Thorogood was right. Bad to the bone. Everyone, in one way or another, we, we were, were by no means healthy humans. We were sick, born sick. Some born to be wild, born to be wild. <laughs> we need, needed a, a, a physician. The healthy don't need a physician. But we needed a physician, the great physician, to come and help us. Jesus. Eh? He, he healed my broken heart. Eh? Come to heal the broken heart. He came to preach the gospel to the poor and tell the poor, it's okay, it's okay. This is not, it's not the end. This world is not the end of it. This is only just a prelude. This is only just a, a preface to life itself. This is just a, a trial. I'm just checking you out to see if you're uh, a good enough soldier to enter into my kingdom. You're just... This is only a uh, boot camp. <laughs> this is only boot camp to see if you, you're a good enough soldier to ride on the plane of Megiddo with Jesus and the rest of the the soldiers and the angels of the Christ. And if you, you pass the test, you'll line up with the saints dressed in white and the angels from heaven and Jesus, the captain of the host. You line up there for the battle of Armageddon on the plain of Megiddo. Oh yeah, the final countdown, the final battle between good and evil. And we win. <laughs> I like that. Word of God is living. Word of God is powerful, eh? so powerful it can turn one from going in uh, one direction to the opposite direction. Eh? The Word of God. 
Food indeed, wine, water, and powerful. It sets the captive free. Heals the broken heart and puts at liberty those who are oppressed and suppressed and depressed. Pozo sets us at liberty. Hey? That's what he came to do, set the captive free. Only the only one can do it. He come to set us free and give us liberty by the blood of his own, his only son. He surely atoned. He atoned for us by the blood of his own son. Now as we walk along, I'm always singing this song. He came to set us free, give us liberty. And na 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 na, na 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 na, na na na. For the word of God is living in powerful, powerful. Right? They talk about in the world, you know, be careful what you say to people. You might hurt someone and words are powerful. There ain't no word as powerful as the word of God. Right? The sword of the spirit. There ain't no word, it, there's no word or words or books in this world as powerful as the Word of God. Eh? Sharper than any two-edged sword. Sharper than any two-edged sword. So when it doesn't work, it's like the surgeon's scalpel. Very precise. Very precise work. The uh, the word of God does. It's dividing what no no knife, dagger or sword can do. No man-made sword can do what the sword of the spirit. The living and powerful sword of the spirit. No sword on the earth can do what the sword of the spirit can do on faint obedience. Dividing the soul from the spirit. Hey? Sorting out. See, that's how powerful the word is. It does all the sorting. It does all the categories. It 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 uh, collates everything in our life. <laughs> hey? The living and the powerful and the the piercing and the division, dividing up and and categorizing what is of the soul and what is of the spirit. Eh? Hey? 
what is of the mind, the will and the emotions, and what is of the spirit, what is of the heart. Are you loving the Lord with all your heart? Or is it just, you know, the mind? We have to have that sorted. What is solid? What is of the soul and what is of the spirit? Because the sons of God, they're led by the spirit of God. Right? And when our spirit is, is organised and we're led by our spirit, and ultimately in subjection to the Holy Spirit, well then, our mind, will and emotion will be all God would. They be in, we'd be in harmony with God. Everything would be correct. It would be correct weight at Durban, you know. Everything would be nice. We'd be competing according to the rules then. So dividing of the soul and the spirit and joints and marrow. This is how far this, this word works. Joints and marrow. No, no, no sword. No butcher's knife. They can separate the marrow gel from the bone. Unless, of course, they try to suck it out with some kind of suction. But I'm talking about a sword doing this. The division of the soul and spirit. In other words, everything is in its place, the soul and the spirit and the, the body, spirit, soul and body we are made up of. The spirit is leading now because we're born again. Our spirit is alive. We were dead before, just walking dead. But now the spirit is alive in us. We've been quickened by the Holy Spirit. So our spirit is leading the charge. Our soul is following on and our body is following the soul. So, and who's leading right up the front? The Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost and then it's the, it's our spirit following the Holy Ghost, then our soul following our spirit, and then our flesh and body following our soul. See that? This is what the living word does. It puts everything in its pigeonhole and everything in place. That's how powerful it is. How powerful this word is. But there's no... no sword on earth to divide joints, bone from marrow gel. Okay? Only the word of God, the sword of the spirit, This is, this is how omni, this is how powerful, all powerful is the Word of God. All present, all knowing. This is Jesus, this is the Word of God. We've got such a, a, a great helper. <laughs> We know the Holy Ghost is, is called the helper, but I'm talking about, in general, God as a helper. 
you got no one to compare. There's nobody. Nothing. No, you can put all the gods of the world together. You can put Muhammad in there, or I should say Allah and so what's that Indian god? I don't know. I don't know much about these gods. I'm glad of that. Krishna and the Pope. And, you can put them all together. Throw them in the one bag. And take them away and put them in the dump. Put them all in there. They wouldn't even... Scratch the toenails of Jesus, the little toenail. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. It, it, it's there can be no comparison. There is no comparison to Omni, to to the all powerful God, all knowing, all present, omnipotent. All powerful, omnipresent, all present, everywhere at once. And omniscient, knowing all things. That's A double L. All things. Okay? Nothing can compare with that. And this is the one. This is the one that says, Follow me. Why would you not? Huh? And the, the thing is that I don't just follow Jesus because he'd done things for me. He set because he set me free from booze and the bondage of alcohol and nicotine and, and and evil sinful living I don't follow him just because of that I follow because I love him I've fallen in love with him that's because he first loved me that's how I know how lovely he is, because he first loved me. <laughs> you are so beautiful to me. Can't you see? You're everything I hope for. You're everything I need. You are so beautiful to me. That's Jesus. He's always there. Huh? Never had a friend like Jesus. Huh? I've never had a friend like Jesus, no, I've never had a friend like him. He's faithful and true, and he's always there. <laughs> no, I've never had a friend like him. No, I've never had a friend like Jesus. No, I never had a friend like him. Of all the people I've known in the last 66 years, next week I turn 66. I'm on Route 66. <laughs> take the tip and take the Route 66. In 66 years, I've never, ever had a friend. I don't care, family, relatives, mates, Matey, buddy, pal, never had a friend like Jesus. There's no one like him. He's a one-off. <laughs> Father broke the mould when he made you. 
not when he made it. Father um, broke the mold when he made the Saviour Jesus. Not made, that's why I keep saying made. That goes with breaking the mold. And, um, what can I say? There's none. I just stick with that. There's none. Like the sun. <laughs> none like the sun. Jesus. Who was not made, who always was, and is, and is to come. Just as it says here. Okay. This is what it says here. Revelation 1 8. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and is to come, the Almighty. See what it says? That He's the beginning and the end. Okay. He is the beginning. And he is the end. The word the says it all. The beginning and the end. It's like saying he doesn't, God doesn't have a lot of love, he is love. <laughs> right? He doesn't have a lot of knowledge, he is knowledge. He is. Let's read it. Let's go over. I believe that. Therefore I preach it and teach it. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You cannot diligently seek the Lord and not be rewarded. It's the same thing as giving. You can't give a cup of cold water in his name and not be rewarded. He's not going to be indebted to you or me. Right? He will reward. But look at that. Without faith it's impossible to please God. Right? Faith. <laughs> Without faith, which is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's a good testimony, isn't it? Faith. The evidence. It's the evidence of things not seen. Evidence. How can that be evidence of things not seen? Wow. Powerful substance. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. So he likes to cut it all short, and cut to the chase. He culls everything, doesn't he? You just believe that he is. He is what? That he is omni. That he is omnipresent. That he is omnipowerful. That he is omni. Uh, omniscient, that he is all knowing, that he is all powerful, that he is all present. He's omni. You believe he is, because he is. Because he's the great I am, and the I am he, and the one that was, and the one that is, and the one that's coming, and the one that's within. He is. He's the one. 
that's going to help you and me. He's the one that's faithful to the end. <laughs> he will never forsake you. He will never leave you low. He is with you always, even to the end of this age. He will not leave us. We leave him. Many depart from the faith. Many depart from him. There's always going to be that uh, portion, isn't there? He said there'll be a great falling away. Not a falling away, a great falling away. Didn't he? He said that through Peter. Many will fall away. We go to 2 Peter. Glory to the Lamb. Better still. Let me correct myself here. We'll go over to um, Thessalonians. Says here, two Thessalonians two one. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as it if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Great apostasy. That's what it's headed up in my Bible, the great apostasy. Let's the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who op opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, and that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken away or taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is, in a, is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. See how important the truth is? It decides whether you're condemned or you're not condemned. <laughs> right? Great apostasy, great falling away. Many fall away. Gets too hard. Don't want to soldier on anymore. I've had enough of this Jesus stuff. 
It's time for me to live for me. Time for me to enjoy myself. If this is my, I'm retiring now. I'm nearly about to receive the pension. I'm going to retire. I think I'll throw the towel in and relax. I'm just... I've had enough of this Jesus stuff. It just brings too much dissension. It brings too much trouble. I want to be everyone's friend now. And I'll retire gracefully and go to hell. <laughs> hey? What do you reckon? Huh? No. That's a, a not believing the Lord. That's not faith, is it? And it's not obedience. Certainly not coordinating and harmonising with God. It's certainly not believing that He is. You're just believing that you ought to be. <laughs> yes. So, we were in Hebrews, weren't we? Hebrews 6. Uh, sorry, Hebrews 11, 6. And of course, uh, verse 7, By faith, Noah being divinely warned of the things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. See that? He didn't see anything. By faith now being divinely warned of things not yet seen. See, he moved by faith, moved with godly fear and respect and love and prepared a boat for the saving of the household. And he condemned the world. Noah condemned the world. What do you think of that? That's a little he, that's a little h, not a big h for God, but a little h. And he condemned the world with his action by building that boat. Eh? They were condemned because they did not believe in what he was doing. And just like that other mob we're reading about who did not believe in Hebrews 3, 19. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Hey? Unbelief. So today, we're looking at the O, Omni, incorrect. He's so correct, he's Omni. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. Finally, it says, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart of every man or woman. What do you think of that? Huh? The word of the Lord. It discovers you, it discovers me, it discovers our condition. <laughs> it looks straight through us. We can't hide, which is the next verse 13, Hebrews 4.13. And there is no creature hidden from his son. But all things are naked and laid bare open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Must give account. Everything's laid bare. It's naked. Can't hide. No one can hide from God. You can close the door and you still can't hide. If you get in the cupboard, <laughs> you get in your cupboard, hide in there. Put a blindfold on and get in the cupboard, and then you then you can hide from him. Hogwash. Ain't no one going to hide from God. We can't hide our thoughts, and we can't hide our deeds. 
and we can't hide our body from God. There is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open. Wow. Powerful? Okay. How powerful is that? See, he knows all things. He's omniscient. He knows all things. I like that. Who doesn't want to hang around with a know-all? I tell you, I do. <laughs> I've always wanted that. Someone that knew everything. Right? Then I can become wise. Then I can gain knowledge. Then I can be uh, blessed with understanding. And I learn how to be more compassionate. Learn how to be more uh, generous. Learn how to be more um, kind. The Lord shows us how to. <laughs> he shows us everything, doesn't he? Because he is everything. He's the greatest. He's the most of the the tasters. He's my Lord. He's Jesus. Discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay. That's enough to say, I surrender, Lord. Isn't it? But people still don't, people still don't fear the Lord after all that. The sword of the Spirit. The Word of God. The Spirit of God. You put those two together, the Word of God and the Spirit of God. I tell you what, that's power plus. That's just beyond understanding. Full. Beyond, beyond full comprehension. Only God has full comprehension. Complete. Of everything. Let's go forward today and tell the people about the Omni. The all-powerful God we serve, the all-present God everywhere at once, and the all-knowing, uh, the omniscient, all-knowing God. Okay? That's the one we serve. Not some statue, not some piece of clay or stone. Like they have Buddha, you know, the big piece, of, big slab of stone. They you know, rub his belly or something, don't they? They rub his belly. That's supposed to, that's supposed to be for good luck, you know? Lucky I'm with Amy. Lucky you're with Amy. Yeah, they're called lucky ducks, aren't they? <laughs> oh, he's a lucky duck. Look at that fancy house he's got. Lucky duck. Stress. You know what lucky means, don't you? It means I like to praise the goddess luck, L-U-K. Not, I don't want to say, oh, I'm blessed. By who? You know, even those who say I'm blessed, who, who, blessed by who? Who blessed you? God. Oh yeah, what's his name? Uh, God. <laughs> his name's Jesus. Hey, he's the one that blesses us. Just read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I have no one. Hey? He lays me down and past your screen. He's the shepherd, see? Of the sheep. The door of life. If you don't come by the door, 
He is the door. Read that in John 10, chapter 10. You're a thief and a robber if you, you think you're going to come some other way. There's no other way. You don't come through the Pope or, or Mohammed or... We don't come through uh, Tez Russell or Joseph Smith. We come through Jesus. And if you don't, if you're not promoting Jesus as saviour, you're not saved. Simple as that. He's the be-all and end-all. So it's been a lovely morning again, and I'm sure there's a couple of gems there somewhere that you can put in your collection. And then when, at the appropriate time, you can give it to someone. And then the Lord will give you new gems. <coughs> right? So, uh, let's go forward and rejoice once again today. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody said amen.